Wave characteristics. Measuring waves. Beaches change in size, shape, and sediment type, mainly because of the energy produced by waves. They are generated by the wind blowing over water. As the waves move out of the area where the wind is blowing, they form a regular pattern known as swell waves. Waves can be classified as high energy, medium energy, or low energy waves. It is expected that climate change will affect wind patterns and, as a result, this will transform the type of waves that reach our coasts. Although these effects or situations have not been quantified, it is generally believed that stronger waves and swells will be the norm. Waves possess three main characteristics, height, wavelength, and direction. These characteristics can be measured. For this study, you will need the following materials. Pencil, paper, clipboard, telescopic leveling rod, chronometer or a wristwatch with a seconds hand, compass, activity, wave height, procedure. Number one, ask one of the participants to hold the rod and walk into the water, stopping exactly where the wave breaks. Number two, another participant should record the height where the crest and trough of the wave touched the rod. The person holding the rod will convey the data to the person that is taking notes for the group. Number three, the difference between these two measurements will be the height of the wave. It is a good practice to have two participants doing the wave height measurements independently. Afterwards, compare the results. Activity, wave period. Wave period is the average time it takes for a wave to pass a fixed object, measured by recording the time it takes 11 crests to pass, then dividing this number by 10. If there is no fixed object, measure the time it takes for 11 waves to break on the beach. Procedure. Number one, use a chronometer or a wristwatch with a seconds hand. Number two, start counting when the first wave breaks on the shore. Number three, stop counting on the 11th wave. Number four, divide the total number of seconds by 10 to obtain the wave period. Activity, wave direction. Wave direction is the direction from where the waves approach and it is measured in degrees. Procedure. Number one, stand on the highest point of the beach. Number two, align the compass towards the direction where the waves are coming from, in a right angle to the wave crests. It is recommended that these wave measurements be taken at least twice a month. For more specific data, weekly measurements should be recorded. If you record these measurements for a long period of time, seasonal changes will become apparent. You can correlate this data with other data sets, for example, beach width or marine debris. Activity, watching out for a tsunami. Procedure. Number one, when you go to the beach, look for signposts and warnings concerning tsunamis in the area and take pictures of them. Number two, Initiate a discussion about this topic in your classroom or group. Number three, research the history of the area you live in and find out if it has ever been affected by a tsunami. Number four, use Google Earth to access an aerial view of your beach and determine how many houses and people will be affected if a tsunami wave enters inland one kilometer. Activity, keep a beach journal. Number one, go to the beach you monitor after storms or hurricanes, strong wind events, and prolonged periods of rainfall. Number two, take pictures and record any drastic changes that may have happened in your beach. Number three, record detailed descriptions and the exact dates of your observations. 
Studying wave characteristics will help you become familiar with the changes that continuously occur in the selected beach and in the sea. This will allow you to recognize the potential risks that you might be exposed to and thus appropriate actions can be taken. Continue with the activities of Sandwatch for good decision making.